Marine is, uh, sorry, uh, air pollution is another um, area that we've been analysing very significantly and uh, we've, we've got uh, numerous air modellers and, and uh, experts who have, uh, who have given us some, some material in relation to this. Um, we've had an air monitoring station in place within the Tamar Valley for the last two years, monitoring the background of, uh, of, of the airship to get an understanding for, uh, for what, that, uh, uh, what that background level is to then understand whether we make any, uh, any impression on that. All of our modelling indicates that, uh, that there won't be any increase at all in the air shed of, of pollutants as a result of this mill. And again, we're quite happy to back that up with, with solid science. We've done something which is a, a first within pulp mills in relation to odour, and many would, would, would associate pulp mills with odour, and, and you'd be right to do that. Um, certainly if you, if you go to Traralgon and, and uh, um, smell the odour from that particular mill or overseas, you do smell odour. What's the shift that's been made in relation to this over the last uh, couple of decades? And again, we're doing something uh, to take that further. Uh, odour is normally associated in pulp mills with, with when your boilers are not operating at, at full capacity. Normally all of the malodorous gases coming through your plant are taken up by the burner when it's operating at a, at a full level, churning away, burning all those gases up um, at, a, at a kind of you know, high intensive uh, and, and high temperature pr process. What we've done is actually put in place two backup incinerators um, that will be operating uh, uh, on, on, on hot standby mode at all times um, uh, to actually burn um, those odours if the recovery boiler or the power boiler from the plant is not operating at full capacity. Whilst um, that, uh, these incinerators is not new technology in the context of us not understanding whether it's going to work or not, um, it is new technology to have it all put together in this kind of context within a pulp mill. And we've gone um, to significant additional expense uh, to, uh, to put these back up its, its incinerators within to the project. Look, just quickly wanted to touch on resource supply, and I won't talk too much about this, um, because at the end of the day, uh, from our perspective, this project isn't about what's happening in the forests. It's simply about value adding to forests which are, um, which are being harvested in any case and are currently being exported. But just to touch on it quickly, um, uh, all of the forests in Tasmania are harvested under a regional forest agreement. We've made a commitment in this process that we won't use old growth logs in the mill. Increasingly plantation timber will be used as feedstock for the mill. And uh, about 60% of the overall export, export wood from Tasmania on a sustainable basis would flow into this pulp mill. So this is showing the, the predicted sustainable harvest into the future from Tasmania and this is showing what will flow into the pulp mill. So you can see that it takes um, uh, well over half of the export wood chip uh, industry out of Tasmania. In terms of, uh, uh, in terms of the, uh, uh, the um, location of that wood within the state, most of it already comes from the northeast of Tasmania and already flows to those wood chip plants right next door to where our proposed location is. So it's really business as usual uh, to a large degree for us. We have a need for a bit of additional wood from outside of the, of the region and our plan is to, to utilise the rail system to bring that wood in to ensure that there's no additional log truck movements within the state. Well, Guns has invested significantly in our sustainable forest management over the last five years or so, uh, and even well before that. Um, we're actually the first company to get ISO 14001 environmental management system for, for our forest practices. Uh, and that was in 1997. Um, in uh, 2003, we were the first company to achieve the kind of national benchmark for forest management in Australia, which is the Australian Forestry Standard. Uh, we have PFC accreditation for labelling our forest products uh, on the international marketplace. And you can see the kind of logos that we use here under that sustainable framework. And we have a chain of custody which allows us to, to label our products as coming from sustainably managed forests. And this is a real passion for our staff. Um, we've got about 80 uh, uh, specific uh, forestry staff within the company that manage our forests on a daily basis. They've got either uh, professional uh, or, uh, or, or higher level training in relation to, uh, to forest and forest management. And the reason they come to work each day is to manage our forests and manage them, uh, manage them successfully on a sustainable basis. 
and our staff do an excellent job at that and this just gives you an understanding of the, what sustainability means in the context of forestry these days. And you can see it's a whole spectrum of, uh, of, of social, environmental and, and economic aspects. And we consider ourselves the true environmentalists in terms of how we manage our forests. We really do. And that's, you know, that's, that's the reason for, for people wanting to get involved in this industry, is to make a positive difference uh, to ensure that we can harvest a product which is a renewable product and do that sustainably. We produce various reports if people are interested. We have some of those on our, on our website. Uh, look, um, uh, our plan would be if, if we achieve our necessary approvals um, and the federal approval to, to start construction uh, basically immediate, immediately. We've had this project um, at a higher state of readiness for, for about three years now. Um, we've, uh, we've had uh, consultants involved to, to, to plan the whole mill um, and lay the whole thing out. We have an alliance with John Holland and McMahon um, who are part of the Leighton Holdings Group to actually uh, construct this mill. Um, and we have equipment uh, orders in place overseas to actually go and, and purchase some of the, the, the bits of equipment that, that have to come internationally for this, uh, for this product. It's about a two year construction period. Um, so you can see, uh, I guess um, this is a really long term project for us. As I said, we've been going about four years now. Um, at least three years right in the throngs of an assessment process and if we do get approval we've still got at least a couple of years to go before the mill's built. So it's, it's a five year plus project to, to go down the path of something like this. And we'd like to argue that it perhaps shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't be a five year project when you, when you can demonstrate your science. <coughs> Look, I'll just quickly touch on economics um, and I don't want to dwell on this. I think the environmental aspects was mainly what I wanted to discuss with you. Um, the project's about $1.7 billion. It would be the largest uh, ever investment in the forestry sector um, uh, in Australia and the largest investment in the private sector within, uh, within Tasmania. And in terms of the economic impact of it, I'll just focus on the, um, about $6.7 billion in net present value terms to the Tasmanian economy, which is about a 2.5% uh, increase in the economy of the state. So it's a, it's a huge project in the context of that. As far as employment is concerned, um, looking at direct and indirect um, uh, through a modelling process, obviously during the construction phase there's a, a, a huge employment impact <coughs> and then an employment impact um, averaging about 1,600 employees over the life of the, of the project in a direct and an indirect sense. And to put that in context, uh, that's about a 2% increase in employment within Tasmania. <coughs> 